let's just ask question. Do you complain often of feeling bad? And if so, what is the cause? Do you find fault with other people at the slightest provocation? Do you frequently make mistakes in your work? And if so, why? Are you sarcastic and offensive in your conversation? Do you deliberately avoid the association of anyone? And if so, why? Do you suffer frequently with indigestion? If so, what is the cause? Does life seem futile and future hopeless to you? If so, why? Do you like your occupation? If not, why? Do you often feel self-pity and if so, why are you envious of those who excel you? To which do you devote most time thinking of success or of failure? Are you gaining your or losing self-confidence as you grow older? Do you learn something or of value from all mistakes? Are you permitting some relative or acquaintance to worry you? If you why? If so, why? Are you sometimes in the clouds that at other time in the depth of the despondency? Who has the most aspiring influence upon you? What is the cause? Do you tolerate negative or discouraging influences which you, which you can avoid? Are you careless of your personal appearance? If so, when and why? Have you learned how to drown your troubles by being too busy to be annoyed by them? Would you call yourself a spineless weakling if you permitted others to do your thinking for you? Do you neglect internal bathing until auto-intoxication makes you ill-tempered and irritable? How many preventable disturbances annoy you and why do you tolerate them? Do you resort to liquor, narcotics, or cigarette to quiet your nerves? If so, why do you not try willpower instead? Does anyone nag you? And if so, for what reason? Do you have a definite major purpose? And if so, what is it? What plans have you for achieving it? Do you suffer from any of the six basic fears? If so, which ones? Have you, have you a method by which you can shield yourself against the negative influence of others? Do you make deliberate use of auto-suggestion to make your mind positive? Which do you value most, your material possessions or your privilege of controlling your own thoughts? Are you easily influenced by others against your own judgment? Has today added anything of value to your stock of knowledge or state of mind? Do you face is currently the circumstances which make you unhappy or sidestep the responsibility? Do you analyze all mistakes and failures and try to profit by them? And do you take the attitude that this is not your duty? Can you name three of your most demanding damaging weakness? What are you doing to correct them? Do you encourage other people to bring their worries to you for sympathy? Do you choose your daily experience, lessons, or influence which aid in your personal advancement? Does your presence have a negative influence on other people as a rule? What habit of the other people annoy you most? Do you form your own opinions or permit yourself to be influenced by other people? Have you learned how to create a mental state of mind with which you can shield yourself against all discouraging influences? Does your occupation inspire you with faith and hope? Are you conscious of possessing a spiritual force of sufficient power to enable you to keep your mind free from all form of fears? Does your religion help you to take your own mind positive? Do you feel it your duty to share other people's worries? If so, why? If you believe that birds of a feather flock together, what have you learned about yourself by studying the friends whom you attract? 
what connection if any do you see between the people with whom you associate most closely and any unhappiness you may experience could it be causes possible that some person whom you consider to be a friend is in reality your worst enemy because of his negative influence on your mind by what rules do you judge who is helpful and who is damaging to you are you intimate associate mentally superior or inferior to you how much time out of every 24 hours do you devote to your occupation sleep play and relaxation acquiring useful knowledge a uh, plain waste how among your existence encourage you most caution you most discourage you most help you most in other ways what is your greatest worry how why do you tolerate it when does offer you free unsolicited advice do you accept it without question or analyze their motive what above all else do you most desire do you intend to acquire it are you willing to subordinate all other desire for this one how much time daily do you devote to acquiring it do you change your mind often if so why do you usually finish everything you begin are you are you easily impressed by other people business or professional titles colleagues d degrees or wealth are you easily influenced by what other people think or say of you do you cater to people because of their social or financial status whom do you believe to be the greatest person living in what respect in this person superior to yourself how much time have you devoted to studying and answering these questions at least one day is necessary for the analysis and the answering of the entire list if you have answered all these questions truthfully you know more about yourself then the majority of people study the question carefully come back to them once each week for several months and be astounded at the movement of additional knowledge great value to yourself you will have gained by the simple method of answering the questions truthfully if you are not certain concerning the answer of to some of the questions seek the counsel of those who know you well especially those who have no motive in flattering you and see yourself through their eyes the experience will be astonishing you have absolutely control over but one thing and that is your thoughts this is the most significant and inspiring of all facts news to men it reflect man's divine nature this divine Progative is the sole means by which you may control your own destiny. If you fail to control your own mind, you may be sure you will control nothing else. If you must be careless with your pos possessions, let it be in connection with material things. Your mind is your spiritual estate. Protect and use it with the care to which divine royalty is entitled you were given a willpower for this purpose unfortunately there is no legal protection against those who either by design or ignorance poison the mind of other by negative suggestion this form of destruction should be punishable by heavy legal penalty because it may and often d does destroy one's chance of acquiring material things which are protected by law men's men with negative minds tried to convince thomas a edison that he could not build a machine that would record and reproduce the human voice because they said no one else had ever produced such a machine edison did not believe them he knew that the mind could produce anything the mind could conceive and believe and that knowledge was the thing that lifted the greatest addition above the common herd. Men with negative mind told F. W. Woolworth 
he would go broke trying to run a store on five and ten cent sale. He did not believe them. He knew that he could do anything within reason if he backed his plans with faith, exercising his right to keep others' many negative suggestions out of his mind. He piled up a fortune of more than a hundred million dollars. Men with negative mind told George Washington he could not hope to win against the vastly superior forces of the British, but he exercised his divine right to believe. Therefore, this book was published under the protection of the star and his strips, while the name of Lord Cornwallis has been all but forgotten. Doubting Thomas, Thomas's scoffed scornfully when Henry Ford tried out his first crudely built automobile on the street of Detroit. Some said the thing never would become practical. Others said no one would pay money for such a contraption. Ford said, I'll build the earth with dependable motor cars, and he did. His decision to trust his own judgment has already piled up a fortune far greater than the next five generations of his descendant can squander for the benefit of those seeking vast riches. Let it be rem remembered that practically the sole difference between Henry Ford and a majority of the more than 100,000 men who work for him is this Ford has a mind and control it. The other have minds which they do not try to control. Henry Ford has been repeatedly mentioned because he is an astounding example of what a man with a mind of his own and a will to control it can accomplish. His record knocks the foundation from under that time one alibi. I never had a chance to Ford never had a chance either, but he created an opportunity and backed it with persistence until it made him richer than Crucis. Mind control is the result of self-discipline and habit. You either control your mind or it controls you. There is no Always compromise. The most practical of all method for controlling the mind is the habit of keep keeping it busy with a definite purpose, backed by definite plan. Study the record of any man who achieved noteworthy success, and you will observe that he has control over his own mind. Moreover, that he exercises that control and direct it towards the attainment of definite objective. Without this control, success is not possible. 57 Famous Alibis by Old Man If People who do not succeed have an distinguishing trait in common. They know all the reasons for failure and have what they believe to be fair tied alibis to explain away their own lack of achievement. Some of these alibis are clever and a few of them are justifiable by the fact. But alibis cannot be used for money. The world wants to know only one thing. Have you achieved success? A character analyst compile a list of the most common used alibis as you read the list. Examine yourself care carefully and determine how many of these alibis, if any, are your own property. Remember, to the philosophy presented in this book makes every one of these alibis obsolete. If I hadn't have a wife and family, if I had enough pull, if I had money, if I had a good education, if I if I could get a job, if I had good health, if I only had time, if times were better, if other people understand me, if conditions around me were only different, if I could live my life over again, if I did not fear what they would say, if I had 
been given a chance, if I knew I had a chance, if other people didn't have it in for me, if nothing happens to stop me, if I were only younger, if I could only do what I want, if I had been born rich, if I could meet the right pupil, if I had the talent that some people have, if I dare assert myself, if I only had embraced past opportunities, if people didn't get on my nerve, if I didn't have to keep house and look after the children, if I could save some money, if the boss only appreciate me, if I only had somebody to help me, if my family understand me, if I live in a big city, if I could just get it started, if I were only free, if I had the personality of some people, if I were not so fat, if my talent were known, if I could just get a break, if I could, if I had the personality of some people, if I were not so fat, if my talent were known, if I could just get a break, if I could only get out of debt, if I hadn't failed, if I hadn't failed, if I only knew how, if everybody didn't oppose me, if I didn't have so many worries, if I could marry the right person, if people weren't so dumb, if my family were not so extravagant, if I were sure of myself, if luck were not against me, if I had not been born under the wrong star, if it were not true that what is to be will be, if I did not have to work so hard, If I hadn't lost my money, if I live in a different neighborhood, if I didn't have a class, if I only had a business of my own, if other people would only listen to me, if dot dot dot, and this is the greatest of them all, dot dot dot, I had the courage to see myself as I really am. I would find out what is wrong with me and correct it, and then I might then I might have a chance to profit by my mistakes and learn something from the experience of others for I know that there is something wrong with me or I would now be where I would have been if I had spent more time analyzing my weakness and less time building alibis to cover them. Building alibis with which to explain away failure is a nat national pastime. The habit is as old as the human race and is fatal to success. Why do people cling to their pet alibis? The answer is obvious. They defend their alibi because they created them. A man alibi is the child of his own imagination. It is human nature to defend one's own brain child. Building alibi is a deeply rooted habit. Habits are difficult to break, especially when they provide a justification for something we do. Plato had this truth in mind when he said the first and best victory is to conquer self. To be conquered by self is, of all things, the most shameful and vile. Another philosopher had the same thought in mind when he said, It was a great surprise to me when I discovered that most of the ugliness I saw in others was but a reflection of my own nature. It has always been a mystery to me, said Albert Hubbard. Why people spend so much time deliberately fooling themselves by creating alibis to cover their weaknesses it used differently. This same time would be sufficient to cure the weakness that no alibi would be needed. In parting, I would remind you that life is checkerboard and the player opposite you is time. If you hesitate before moving or neglect to move promptly, your men will be wiped off the boat by the time you are playing against a partner who will not tolerate indecision.
previously you may have had a logical excuse for not having forced life to come through with whatever you ask but that alibi is not obsolete because you are in possession of the master key that unlocks the door to life bountiful riches the master key is intangible but it is power it is a privilege of creating in your own mind a burning desire for a definite form of riches there is no penalty for the use of the key but there is a price you must pay if you do not use it the price is failure there is a reward of stupendous proportion if you put the key to use it is a satisfaction that comes to all who conquer self and force life to pay whatever is asked the reward is worthy of your effort will you make the star and be convinced if we are rela- related said the immortal immersion we shall meet in closing may i borrow his thought and say if we are related we have to these pages met